Good afternoon, everyone. We gather today to celebrate the 16th Sunday in ordinary time. Please silence any electronic devices and let us take a moment to quiet ourselves as we prepare now for our worship. Sing on, sing. Seven, four, four. Please stand.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them, and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them, so that they need no longer fear and tremble, and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up the righteous suit to David. As king he will reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. My name is Mike Reeder. Some of you might know me because I used to come here years ago when I was the chaplain at McGann Mercy High School. Um, I came here like once a month. Right now, I'm the pastor at St. Joseph Parish over in Ronkakama. But today, I'm here representing Unbound, the sponsorship organization based in Kansas City and built on our gospel values and our gospel call to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Ordinarily, when I preach for Unbound, what I do is I start with statistics on world poverty, kind of to shock you and get your attention. But this year, I feel like we're already shocked with everything that's been going on this year, from the pandemic to all sorts of tension to another season of wildfires, another season of hurricanes that could be devastating, all the different things that have gone on in the past 16 months. I think we're already kind of shocked. You might be saying, well, with all those things, how can you come out and ask us to help? Ask us to be sponsors. That's what I'm here for. Well, I can do it because of two things. One is our commandment to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That commandment doesn't say only do it in good times. It says to do it. But the other is because I was invited by your pastor, Father Gill, who knows you, who knows your hearts. And he knows that you're good people who will do what you can in different circumstances. And that's why I'm here. And I'm grateful for the invitation. I'm grateful to stand here in this sacred space where the sacraments are celebrated. But also to stand here with a community of people who are living the gospel. I'm here in sacred space where heaven and earth meet. Not only because of the sacraments, but because of the Christian lives that you're living. Now, 27 years ago, I was ordained a priest. About a month later, first of all, that changed my life radically, but about a month later, another change happened. A very good friend of mine who I've known my entire life, who I love and trust tremendously, said to me, Mike, I think you should become a sponsor through this organization, because I think it would be good for your Christian journey. So I did it. And he was so right. Sponsorship and working with Unbound has changed my life. So I'm here today to pass on that invitation to you. Because I think if you become a sponsor, it will be good for your Christian journey. I believe in it. Will. Now, Unbound is the largest Catholic sponsorship organization in the United States. We have over 300,000 children, youth, and elderly sponsored in 19 countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. We are, I believe, the only Catholic organization that invites people to sponsor the elderly as well as children and youth. Our mission is simply this, to walk with the poor and the marginalized. And as we do, we hope to build a worldwide community of compassion through one-on-one -on -one outreach. One-on-one -on -one is sponsorship, but it's also me coming and talking to a small community, and maybe I'm speaking to one heart over here and one heart over here and inviting you into this. We are very good stewards of your money. 
92.6% of every dollar that is donated goes directly to our services. We get the highest marks that you can get from all, all the different charity watchdogs, Charity Navigator, Better Business Bureau, and all those different organizations. We do very well with them annually. But again, I'm here to pass on an invitation that was given to me. Maybe becoming a sponsor would be good for your Christian journey. But I want to put that invitation into the context of our celebration. Now, in the first reading, um, we heard that a righteous shoot is going to come from the stump of Jesse. And that's talking specifically about Jesus. But just before that, we heard, I will send shepherds, multiple. So it couldn't have been talking just about Jesus. It's talking about those who will guide. That could be any one of us called to that. Now, sponsorship is not exactly shepherding, but it's walking with. God said to Jeremiah that I'm going to send shepherds so that they won't have to be afraid anymore. When someone is sponsored, they don't have to be afraid of extreme poverty anymore because they have a companion to walk with them. In the Gospel, Jesus, his heart was moved with pity by the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They had no one to walk with them. But you know, if we were to continue reading this Gospel, it goes on. It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. The disciples come to Jesus and say, this is a faraway place and we don't have enough food. Send them away. And Jesus' response to them is our call. You give them something to eat. Each one of us is called to be part of that. But you know what happened when they did that? Everybody feasted, including the disciples. So when we choose to be part of an organization such as Unbound, we feast with the poor because the poor have plenty to offer us. We have our hearts fed even as we feed their dreams. So I want to tell you about how hearts are fed by sponsorship. Ordinarily, I can tell you a lot of stories about people in poverty and things that have happened, but I just decided, you know, maybe today I want to talk about some of those people who've been touched by sponsorship. I was preaching a couple of years ago in a parish in, in Greasy Point in the Diocese of Brooklyn. And as I'm preaching, a woman stands up and says, can I say something? That's the most frightening thing that could happen to somebody in the world, I'll tell you. Can I say something? I said, okay. So with tears in her eyes, she spoke to the community. She said, I've been a sponsor for about three years. I sponsored a small child. When I first started, she was in preschool. And I've gotten letters a couple of times a year, but they're written by her mother. This year she's in school, and just last week I got my first letter that she wrote herself. It was wonderful. I said to her, you can interrupt me anytime you want. <laughs> That's an amazing story. By the way, are there any people here who are sponsors already from my God? Raise your hand. I have a special message for you, and that is thank you. And that thank you is not just from me. It's from all the sponsored family, because I've traveled with them now many times, and every time we visit the community, they thank us and thank us, and we say, they're not their sponsors. It doesn't matter. You represent the sponsors, and so I need to pass on that thanks. Thank you for what you do. It does change lives. I want to tell you about my godson, Jonathan. I've been sponsoring him for about 14 years. By the way, we use that term, godson, godparents and godchildren, because it's a sacred relationship. So when I first got my folder with Jonathan's information, it said in it, He's very serious, but eventually he warms up to people. Well, the day I met him, I went down to El Salvador where he lives, and they were on a bus, and they announced, told the, the, the sponsor to come out, they would, the, the godchild would come out. Jonathan, about four years old, ran and jumped into my arms. Now, if that's kind of serious and he might warm up to me, I was afraid of what might happen in the future. But he jumped into my arms and into my heart. He was a very energetic young boy, always just wanted to play soccer. It was exhausting. But over the years, I have seen him many, many times because I've been bringing uh, teenagers to El Salvador for years. And so I've watched Jonathan grow. And there was one time when we were visiting him that it was, we were supposed to get a park and it got rained out. So we had to meet at the unbound offices. And I had, had some gifts for him. I had a children's Bible, and in the back were maps. 
And he goes to the back page, takes out a piece of paper, finds some colored pencils, and he just starts looking and drawing and looking and drawing. He drew a perfect replica of the map in the back of the book. The kid's an artist, a really good one. I had no idea. The poor are gifted, too. And he also taught me something. I didn't know that the patron, or one of the patron saints of artists, is St. Luke, the evangelist. He taught me that. Well, he's now in his teens, and he's developing more and more talents. He now not, not only does he do art, he plays guitar and is learning ukulele, but he's staying close to St. Luke, because St. Luke is also the patron of doctors. And that's his dream, to be a doctor. And I would like to walk with him the entire way. You see, the way it works is, when we were born, each one of us, our parents held us and loved us and had hopes and dreams for us. And then over time, we started to develop our own dreams and they really got developed according to our talents. And because of the support we had from family and community and school, we were able to live many of those dreams. It's the same way for everyone. It's the same way for the poor. But the thing is, they don't necessarily always have the support, someone to walk with them so that they can make those dreams a reality. Sponsorship does that. And I hope to be able to make Jonathan's dreams a reality. A couple of years ago, I was with him, and on the day we met, um, there was also a group of elderly, because we have people sponsoring the elderly as well. There's elderly sponsored people there. And they first, they led us in these stretching exercises that I'm embarrassed to say they put me to shame. They were much better at them than I was. But then we sat down with the elderly and, and with our sponsored children, we sat in groups and talked. And there was 12 elderly people sitting with us, were sitting on the floor, and all of them had bare feet. And I'm looking at their feet and thinking to myself, you know, these feet have walked a lot of miles. And in those miles, they've gained a lot of knowledge and wisdom. So when I got a chance to ask them questions, I said, my godson here is entering his teenage years. Those very exciting and fun, but very dangerous years as well. So I said, do you have any advice for him? Each one of them took a turn, looked him in the eyes with love, and shared some of the wisdom that they had gained. They were responding to what we heard in the first reading today. They were being shepherds for this young man, helping him, giving him guidance for the rest of his life. I recently met a young man who um, he's not only sponsored, but he is a scholarship student. And I'll tell you about that in a minute, but he's, he's going, to, going to college on a scholarship through one bathroom. And later in the day, we went and met a mother's group, and his mother was part of the mother's group. His mother never had a chance to go to school, not even elementary school. So she couldn't read a few years ago. But through Unbound and through this mother's group, she now can read. And after the meeting, hearing about the things that they're doing, I went over to this young man and I said to him, you know, your mother is very proud of you. And he looked at me and smiled. He said, no, I'm very proud of her because she has done something with her life as well. Unbound helped her to start to live her dreams. You see, what's happened is sponsorship has opened doors for them. Think about this. Every time we come to Mass, we hear from Jesus at the altar. Do this in memory. Now what is that? It's an invitation to come to Mass and come to communion, but it's also a call for us to live as He did, to love as He did, to give up ourselves as He did. In other words, we're called to join in His ministry which is opening doors into the presence of Christ, in the presence of God's kingdom. And so I found that sponsorship has opened doors into God's presence for me, even as it's opened doors out of extreme poverty for them. So for Jonathan, for this young man and his mother, sponsorship has opened doors out of poverty, and they are walking through those doors into their dreams, into a future filled with hope because of sponsorship. But what has it done for me? It has taught me so much about Christianity. It's taught me that it is so true what Jesus says, blessed are the poor. It's also taught me in my own life that there's a big difference as a Christian between my wants and my needs. And as a Christian, I'm trying to not spend too much time on my wants. I have a long way to go. 
but by focusing on my needs, that's how I can afford to sponsor. I sponsor five children who are unbound. Again, it's open doors into God's presence. But it's taught me again, blessed are the poor, and blessed are you and I when we hear the cry of the poor and respond to it. So how do you do that? How can you respond? Well, I have about 50 folders just like this one. This little girl, Carol, just turned eight years old last Monday. What a great birthday present it would be for her to have a sponsor this week as she's beginning her eighth year, or beginning her ninth year of life. Carol goes to school. She's too young to have any big, big plans. She likes art and dancing with her friends. That's fine. She has a very good disposition, but she needs support to let those dreams happen. She needs someone to walk with her. So what do you do? If you want to be a sponsor, if you want to think about back on this side, so I'm asking everybody to take the scenic group out to your bars, go out this way, come and visit me. And inside, there's a form that you fill out. You can look at the, at the folders, and then inside, you got to fill out this form and give it to me. You have to put your general address and all that stuff information, and you can make your commitment right now, and you can even pay for the commitment right now. Sponsorship is a big commitment. It's $40 a month. And I know that's a lot of money. But I also know that people do creative things to do that $40 a month. And know one guy who said, I used to stop at 7-Eleven every day on my way to work and buy a cup of coffee. Now I make it at home. And 50, uh, the buck 50 I say is the sponsorship. So every day he's praying for and thinking about his sponsored child as he has his morning coffee. So there's a lot of ways to do it. You can make a payment with cash, check, credit card. What, don't ask me about automatic deposit. Um, this, well, don't ask me about you can ask me about that. There's a way to do it right now on your smartphone. I have a flip phone. I don't know how to do smartphones, so I can't help you with that. Okay, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll do what we can. I use a credit card. It's easy for me. I pay, I pay annually. It's good for unbound. Remember I said that one young man is, uh, receives a scholarship. That's because the interest from people who pay annually is a lot of money, and that creates a scholarship funds. So it's kind of like giving twice with one gift just by paying annually. There's a variety of ways to do it, and if you're not prepared to make a donation today, you can still become a sponsor, speak to me about it, and I'll help you with it. If you're not sure, we have these with the, uh, with the bulletin, and you can take these home, I need to ask you very, a very serious favor, please. Do not walk out of this church with one of these folders unless you fill out the form and give it to me or one of my assistants. A long time ago in high school, play football. You try and walk out without filling out the form, I'm going to tackle you. Right? And I have to tell you, I told that story once, and as I'm saying it, I looked out and I saw my old high school football coach in the congregation. I was like, all right, I got to come clean. I was not that good. And he was hysterical. I didn't say, no, you weren't. All right? So I invite you all to think and pray about the possibility of joining us in the Lord's sponsorship. Um, we live in really really uncertain times. But there's one thing that's very certain. God is walking with us. God wants us to walk with His Son, to follow His Son. And another thing that I'm certain of is that anyone who becomes a sponsor will change two lives. The life of the person you sponsor and yours. I'm here to testify that it has happened in my life. And I'm sure it will happen back over there after the national government. We got another person who wants to share something here? It's uh your bank account. I don't I don't remember how, but the bank account comes out of the right Yes, you can do it what you can do what I have to buy what withdraw from your checking account. Yeah, yes. We can we can do that uh, and anyway I just can't do the smartphone way of doing it. Okay? So I mean I can probably help you but I I don't again I'll put the phone back. All right. Thank you very much. I'll be back there at the end of this. Thank you for inviting me. And now the best hour of I believe in the Lord God. Father all in the maker of heaven and earth, of all things physical and invisible, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God's Son. Father, before all 
So never cease to serve you. We pray in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all the soldiers. O God, with the one perfect sacrifice, brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always in every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in your paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Mm -hmm. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Shepherd me, O oh God. Six four two. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have in view with heavenly mysteries to pass from warmer, former ways to newness of life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Pope Francis has declared July 25th as the first World Day for grandparents and the elderly. Please join us in brightening the lives of the elderly in our community by donating gift bags filled with personal and practical items. A list of suggested items can be found in the bulletin. Please drop off all bags by the weekend of July 31st or August 1st. Thank you. Members from our St. Vincent de Paul Society will be available after Mass to collect your donations for the poor and needy of our community. Thank you for your generosity. And as always, please take home a parish bulletin to keep up with the things here in our parish, the diocese, and our local community. Thank you. Remember, you have to go out that way. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now, mighty God, bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recession hymn, 760, Lead Me, Lord. 760.